Welcome back to the Cinema 4D to Houdini Translator series, where we've already done MoGraph, but what about some of your other favorite tools like, you know, Ben, Taper, Displace? The good news is they are all there, and in many cases, they're way more powerful. I've gone and mapped all our favorite deformers to the equivalent Houdini node or workflow, so you don't have to. So let's get into it. So first up here, we have Bend. We have a box, and we have this guy just headbanging. We've got Bend and Twist, so if I turn all these off, we just have our nothing <laughs> and then we turn bend on which is going back and forth then he's twisting and then we also have a bit of a taper which we can control so if we start this one from scratch which is a nothing happening you can see that our bend is placed in a weird spot and so how we can do that is come down here to our capture axis set capture region from the front we can just do it like this to go up and then space one to come back here. And now we have bend on the whole object. And we can play around with these settings here to see where the capture region might go, how big the length is, because maybe we only want it to bend here. And this applies to all the different things. So at the moment we have a twist, which is really twisting, and a taper, which it's not really tapering. But if we push this in here, kind of works as a bulge as well but if we put it back to its full direction you'll be able to see it bend and then the nice taper maybe we want it tapered on the end here and we also get a, a ramp to be able to control this too so this is a fun one as always and obviously you can put them all like a bend after each other and just keep stacking them on next up is displace now, this one, we have two different versions of it. One is the noise version that you see here. And if we can plug whatever we want into it, we're getting noise. <laughs> and in this mountain node, which kind of works like the landscape node in Cinema, is we have amplitude controls. We have the element size. That's obviously the size of the noise. And animation, they're the main things. And obviously, we've got fractals in case we want it to be a bit smoother. And we obviously have various different noises as well that Houdini gives us. This one's a cool noise. Not all of them have the ability to be animated, but you can animate the offset if you want. The other way for displacement is using some sort of image. So if we use attribute from map, and I've brought in the Cinema 4D logo here, and if we use UV, that's just already been put on our... And then that's going to create a CD node, which is color. And that can be plugged into a peak. Now, peak just displaces things along normals. So if I just plug our test geometry in here, displacement along normals, you can see it just makes it get fatter. But if we use a mask on that, the displacement along normals will just go up. And if we plug a sphere in here, lots of resolution. And then if we use the peak node, or then we come in the map, we can see we've mapped it on here. <laughs> it's not important how it's mapped, but then the peak node will be able to see. We just push them up on their normals. And if we use attribute blur and put that on CD, we can blur and smooth that out a little bit. That's our displacement deformer. Next is our smooth. And if we come here and use the strength, we'll just smooth out the edges of our geometry. And another thing we can do is use mops shape fall off. And we should be able to see, I just have a linear fall off here. And that is going to mask our smoothing. Now let's look at sphere eyes. Now the cool thing in Houdini is using the ray node. Normally it comes in with project rays, which is a little bit of a different operation, but if we turn this to minimum distance and we plug in our collision primitives into the second input here, which is kind of what we want it to convert into, we get this is animating between zero and one for us. Now we can go more and less if we really want. We plug in Flippy here as well. Flippy gets pulled into sphere. But the cool thing about the ray node is it's not just sphere eyes. It can also be whatever you want. Let's plug box into the second input here. Now you can see Flippy, it's converted a little bit more into a cube. Maybe we even want to get a little bit crazy. Maybe Flippy is the second input and we have Sphere as the third. And then if we put a cube, maybe the Sphere becomes more of a cube. Next up is FFD, which is nearly identical to the version in Cinema. We have a box here. And using a bound and division set to three and bounding type box, specifically for a box, we're able to get all these different points. And if we plugged Flippy into here, we'd get a bounding box for all of Flippy but we're plugging the box in here for the moment. And then we edit a couple of the points to move them around. So this is just essentially creating a bounding box that we're able to edit. And coming into the lattice node here, we deform it. 
So you have two different modes, the lattice or points. If you come to points, this will do this essentially, and you can get a radius from how these points are deforming. How we're going to plug this in is the box goes into the first input, the box with the bounding in its rest position goes in the second, and then the edited version of the bounding box goes into the third position. Now mesh to form, which is kind of the same thing, the same principle anyway. So we have Flippy, and instead of creating a bounding box, we're just going to poly reduce him to a much more manageable mesh. And then using a peak node, we're just going to make that mesh a little bit bigger than Flippy is normally. And then we're able to edit that mesh. And how I'm editing it is if I delete that and come into our peak node and just come into a select, let's grab a heap of points and then click transform. An edit node is automatically going to get created. Now we need to not let it go into both. So let's make sure the bounding boss box in its rest position goes into the second input. Then we come in here and we can see the points that are being moved are deforming our geometry. And we have a second version of this, which is using a different type of deformer. And so we have a tube. And then we have a second version of this, which is just using a different type of deforming mesh. Same principle. So we have a tube here and then we have a sphere, low poly sphere that's being edited and I'm moving some points. And then that's deforming our geometry like so. If I highlight the edit node, press enter. We can come into the edits that we've got going. And then if I move that around, it's going to move our geometry. Cool for when you need it. All right, here's a fun one. Spline rail or path to form as it's called in Houdini. Here I've got Flippy just looking like a fish and swimming up a spline. And how that's working is I just have Flippy here, a helix that I've crafted into this nifty shape, and then throwing that into a path to form. And in the path to form, I've got a couple different options here. Uh, I'm animating the curve U position. That's constantly moving. So if you can see that, that's what's happening here. We have this other option to be fraction of geo length that just stretches out flippy. If I press space, we're able to get controls for this and see what's actually happening. So we can stretch him out a lot. So he animates and he kind of deforms with the spline. And then after this section, we have a couple options for the start and end behavior, whether we want to extend, clamp, or just disappear. We have a few options depending on how we want to align and all that jazz. But let's just chuck a few different things in here. This is what it looks like with a box. I mean, this looks a bit ridiculous, but let's change the alignment. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is so funny. Another real good use for it is I've got this tower and I've got a little helix. It looks a little bit different here. And using path to form, we're just making this tower cooked and trippy as all hell and so that's spline rail next is explode and shatter this one i've just got a box and i chuck it into a facet node which essentially allows all those primitives to become their own individual piece of geometry and then into an explode view we'll just explode them all out and if i turn off our facet nothing happens here because it's just one object the turning into facet we get all the different pieces removed from each other and if we put flippy in there the same thing will happen to flippy Next is formula. This is a super powerful one, but it's using vex in an attribute wrangle to do all the different code that we might want. So I have a grid that's being plugged into attribute wrangle and I've got a whole heap of code that is pretty much just giving us a sine wave from the center point to the out using the distance. And we have controls that I've developed on all this amplitude, different scale, but this is just scratching the surface of what can be done with an attribute wrangle and vex. There is an infinite possibilities. Next up is shear. And what I've got here is it just shearing left and right. <laughs> uh, I've just got an expression on the shear here that's just making it go between minus one and one. And I have a soft radius from some points I've selected. Selected all these points. If we just stop, maybe let's select some other points. Let's make it just the top this time. Now it's going to shear based on that. And if I move this soft radius, it's going to go from the area that it was to not. Next up, we have the wind or wave deformer, which is a sine wave in Houdini. Now you can see in the intensity on X axis, I've got it going about this intensity and then frequency, you can up that if we like. The cool thing here is on the box, if you apply a shape fall off like we have before with mops fall off using a linear fall off from top to bottom and then apply that, make sure it says mops fall off here. We're only going to get it happening on the top half of our geometry. Now the final one here, and this is the collision deformer. In this one, we use the wrinkle deformer to do it. And what we have is our box 
And in our box, we plug in our geometry and our rest geometry, a little bit different than the mesh deform that we we're doing before. But in the third input, this is the collision geometry, which I have Flippy and I'm animating him up and down, turning him into a volume and then plugging it in here. This will just give us our geometry colliding. And you can adjust different parameters here to get more or less of a deformation, but it's a super cool, look at that. It's super fun to do. And stay tuned for part three, generators. Generators.